Hello, and welcome to Rust Electricity for Beginners, the series where we build a base and your understanding of electricity and rust one circuit at a time. My name is Ozzy, and in this episode, we're going to introduce two of the most commonly confused components and build a deterrent for would-be raiders. From the Tier 2 workbench, we're going to be using the Memory Cell, RAND Switch, and Digital Clock. From the Level 1 workbench, we're going to be using some familiar components, the Switch, Splitter, Electrical Branch, Blocker, Timer, and Door Controller. In the last episode, we got a look at our new second floor and the garage expansion underneath. We also added a medium battery and the generator backup. Now that we have more power, we don't have to be so stingy with the lights. So I've added five more ceiling lights so that we can transcend ourselves to the land of rust aristocrats who have automatic lighting in their bases. Now we could set these up with a solar panel daylight sensor like we have on the first floor, but now that we have access to the tier two, we're going to use a digital clock instead. But first I'm gonna add a floor down here to make our circuit a little bit easier to work with. We'll put the clock here and then add an electrical branch to split off of. We're gonna start with 15 power and then we'll adjust from there. Plug into our clock. Now the clock shows the time on the server in 24 hour format. And if you hit the configure menu, it allows you to set up to five alarms. The check marks disable those alarms and the minus sign removes them. An alarm will also have an audible sound which we can disable down here at the bottom. By clicking on the numbers, we can set these to whatever we want. So if we want our lights to turn on on the 18th hour or 6 p.m. at night, and then turn off again in the morning at 06, we can set these two alarms and hit save. When those alarms go off, the clock will pass power from its power in through its power out for about five seconds, minus one power. The way we can use this to control our lights is with a memory cell. A memory cell only has two outputs. A memory cell has two outputs, only one of which can be active at a time. So we're going to add an electrical branch and then divert our power over here and plug in our clock and memory cell. The default configuration for the memory cell is this green red light configuration where the left inverted output is active to begin with. You'll see 13 power coming out here, 13 power going in, and no power coming out of the right side output. This right side is what we're going to plug into our lights for now. Now the way to control which output is active is through the nodes on the right side of the memory cell. They're set, reset, and toggle. Power going into the set node will forcibly change the output to the right side output and the green green configuration, which for now will turn on our lights. Power going into the reset node will force the memory cell back into its green red configuration and the inverted output node active, which will turn off our lights because there's no longer power coming to this right node. And then power going into the toggle will trade whichever output is currently active for the inactive output. Right now we're left side active, so sending power will create right side active. Power again will swap and back and forth for every input. Now I'm going to leave my lights off for now and remove my button. And then I'm going to plug the clock into the toggle on our memory cell. Since my lights are currently off and the next alarm I have set is 1800, this will turn on my lights using the toggle by switching over to the output on the right side and giving power to my lights at night. Then when the six o'clock alarm hits, it will once again toggle the memory cell back to the left side inverted output, turning my lights off. Now we can also add a switch to this if we want to be able to control these manually. We'll add another branch to the circuit and pull power from the memory cell into the switch instead so that we have manual control over those lights. Now we'll plug the memory cell back into the branch and we're only going to use one power for the memory cell from now on. That's because what we can do now is take the inverted output from the memory cell, go into the switch off node on the switch, and then the output on the memory cell to the switch on node on the switch. What this does is instead of the memory cell now toggling the lights directly, it will toggle the state of the switch instead. And rather than toggle, it's actually going to direct the switch what to do based on the toggle of the memory cell. So this way, if I have the lights manually turned on during the day, at night when this hits 1800, 
it's still going to toggle over here to the right side output, which is going to attempt to switch the lights on. Since the lights are already on, nothing's going to happen, but that also means it doesn't toggle my lights off when I would rather them be on instead. The same for the inverted output turning on in the morning to, to attempt to turn my lights off. Now to reconfigure our power, I have five lights in series, each using up two power, so I need 10 power coming out of my switch. The memory cell only uses one power for either output to toggle the switch on and off. And then the clock eats one power on its own and uses one power to toggle the memory cell, so this one will stay at two. 10, one, and two gives us 13 for this branch over here. Now the next circuit I want to show you is used to deter would-be raiders. With this circuit, we're going to make it appear as though we're still online and in our base, even if we're out roaming or offline entirely. Sometimes when a raider goes to scout out a base, or even if they're standing outside, boom in hand, hearing a door opening or close can be enough to make them second guess their course of action. This psychological warfare is exactly the purpose of the random door opener. First, we select a door that we wouldn't mind being open if raiders do enter our base. This one should do nicely because we really don't have anything important on the back side of it yet. Next, we're going to add a door controller and a switch because we know we're going to want to be able to turn the circuit on and off. Then we'll add an electrical branch to our power bank so we can split off power. We'll start for, with 10 for now. Wire this into our switch and our circuit's going to have power to work with. Now for this raid deterrent to work, we want to avoid consistent systems like timers. If a raider hears a door opening or closing every 10 seconds, they might catch on to our plan and it's going to end up being pointless, plus then they'll have a free door open that they might be able to pass through. This is where the RAND switch comes in handy. I'm going to send some power into this switch, and then I'm going to connect it to the door controller so I can show you how it works. Now when first powered, the RAND switch is in this green and red light configuration and it's not allowing power to pass through. We have 10 power from our switch and none coming out of the top. Now the nodes on the right say set and reset, which is where this commonly gets confused with the memory cell, which also has a set and reset node. Now the memory cell set forces it to switch outputs and the reset forces it to switch to the inverted output. The RAND switch, however, doesn't quite act the same way. What actually happens when power is sent to the set node on a RAND switch is that it has a 50% chance to change its active state. For example, when I press this button, there's only a 50-50 chance that the RAND switch is going to switch states and allow the door to open. Once I press it again, there's another 50% chance, and this time it actually opens. There are two states to a RAND switch. There's the default green-red configuration, and there's the green-green configuration. The green-red configuration does not allow power to pass through. The green-green configuration allows power to pass through, and the door controller will open the door. Now, while the set node only allows power to periodically change the state of the RAND switch, the reset node will guarantee 100% of the time change the RAND switch back to its default green-red configuration and block power from passing through. So how is this useful? The RAND switch allows us to take something consistent like the timer and turn it into something inconsistent by only activating by chance whenever power is sent through its set node. Instead of activating the door every 10 seconds on its own, a timer paired with a RAND switch may activate the door at 10, 50, 30, or 20 seconds instead. As we build this circuit, try to remember the auto sprinkler circuit we built in episode 9. You will find they're essentially the same, but with some tweaks to fit this particular scenario. First of all, we need to find a way to reactivate this timer whenever it completes each activation. In our auto sprinkler system, we use the secondary timer to serve this purpose, but we can actually do the same thing with the timer's own output instead. First, we'll add a blocker. This blocker is going to have constant power flowing through it, which is going to come out and attempt to activate the timer. The next thing we'll do is add an electrical branch in order to split the power coming out of the timer, one going to the set node on the RAND switch, 
and the rest coming into the block pass-through on the blocker. The way this works is while the timer is active, it's going to attempt to change the state of the door via the RAND switch. It will at the same time block power from passing through the blocker into the toggle on node on the switch. When the timer has finished its activation set, it will stop blocking time to the blocker, allowing that constant power to flow through and reactivate the timer via the toggle on node. This will essentially create an infinite loop of the timer reactivating itself and attempting to open the door at a set period of time. While you can set this for 10 seconds, I recommend something a little more inconsistent such as 7, 21, 13, something like that. Now, I need to send power to all three of these components. I need one in the blocker, two in the timer, and one in the RAND switch. Our auto sprinkler system solved a similar power issue by using a splitter, so we're going to do the same thing here. We'll connect our splitter to our switch, and then we're also going to change our electrical branch to the four power total we need for the circuit. Now as a reminder, the splitter tries to divide its power evenly between its active nodes. Since none of these three are currently active because they're not connected to anything, they all show empty. So sometimes it's hard to see how the splitter is going to divide its power before you've already connected them. Because we have four power coming in it's and we're going to connect three components to it, it's going to attempt to divide evenly between all three of these, sending one to each. But it's going to take that fourth power and send it into the power out one. Since our timer is the component that uses two power, we want to connect that one to the power out one node on the splitter. The other two components can be connected to either node and work just fine. Our random door opener circuit is now complete, and it's a great example of reusing existing circuits as inspiration for new ones. With only a couple of adjustments, we turned our auto sprinkler system into a random door opener, but I do like to make one more adjustment. See, I think in this realm of psychological warfare, garage doors are actually a little more valuable than sheet metal ones. This is because they're louder and make sounds for a longer period of time, and they're more likely to make a raider question whether they have enough boom, particularly if they had planned on raiding through doors. And besides, this circuit was never intended to deter any raider with enough boom and determination to raid us anyways. So those are the two circuits for this video. I hope this video helped you out. If it did, please hit that thumbs up button. Feel free to subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future. Leave any questions or comments for me down below, and I will see you next time. This is where the RAND switch really sw shines. That is a tongue twister if I've ever heard one. That is the where the RAND switch really shines. RAND switch really shines. RAND switch shines. Say that ten times fast.